So these images um, of David Kilborn, we've called this part of the exhibition Messages to Self. We got together and slowly uh, lots of things started unfolding and there were different aspects of his life that came about. And while that was going on, we would take notes of that and then I would go out and I'd go to find a location and bring that story within this place. The most important thing for me is if I move to a new place, I, my art will be created where I'm living in that space. As the relationship grew, Dave revealed a lot to me in terms of things that had happened in his life, like losing his son, Aaron. Dave wanted to go to the gravesite. We went to the gravesite. And because we had already started creating these tableaus, where there was two of them, one being the monk, um, who was even in question, and the other being Dave going back to being almost like a child with his thumb in his mouth, referring to it as there's nothing like a baby, like a child. So that's what that image represents for the way we created that together. So this triptych over here is called the impractical dream. The woman closest to him with the back facing camera was Teresa, that was his first wife. And Teresa had sent Dave into the store to return a garment in Joshua Tree. And he walked into the store and he came across this woman, Amy. And he fell in love with Amy. He had to go back to Teresa, the mother of his children, and explain to her that he's falling in love with somebody else. But the woman in the front of the bed, when you see her face, represents Amy. And he was with Amy for 38 years. And so you see Dave with his eyes closed here and he's going to his dream state. The whole setting over there is underground. The hangman's noose represents guilt. The bunny's head detached from its body represents the divorce and the children below represents separation anxiety. Um, and then on the other side, he wakes up from this impractical dream in reality. And this is what his life became. He fell in love with Amy and his life continued, but there were a lot of things along the way that he had to deal with. So what was so interesting about the butterfly story in terms of Dave was when I first met Dave, he had already transformed. He, was, he had blue hair and he had all these um, brooches and necklaces and different color blazers and he really stuck out. When Amy, before she passed on, she said to Dave, Dave, now's your chance to not be a caterpillar anymore. Become a butterfly. So after Amy passed, Dave went out uh, to the swap meet and purchased all these butterfly brooches that you could see on his jacket. He's sitting on the john and he is contemplating about this message from Amy. So this image represents. The metamorphosis, the change of David, how he reinvented himself. So this image here, um, Dave and I had already been working together for about six months. Because of the familiarity between Dave and I, this, this level of satire started to come into play. So we have the angel with the cross in his hand and we have the devil. However, what made it contemporary for me and Dave was the one who was like, Okay, um, what else are we going to do then? So I said, well, let's bring in this hand grenade and let's bring that into, in, into how this whole thing changes into something more contemporary. But we took the hand grenade and as you can see the hand grenade's in the angel's hand. The devil has the pin from the hand grenade. The idea that I could see him while he was drywalling uh, he would get very frustrated with certain things and you would go, well, I'm happy I didn't say that, or I'm happy I didn't do this because I was frustrated. So it was always the devil on his, on his shoulder wanting to, wanting to become reactive 
And again, there's two days uh, dealing with each other, dealing with himself. In this case, um, going around the desert, Dave knew a lot of things because he had been here since 1976. So he was able to locate places that I wouldn't have seen. He brought me up to speed and we located this place down in Moronga Valley, which was called Willy Boys. And um, this was his sort of homage to his great song that he loved so much, which is Ghost Riders in the Sky.